is Sophie Verite. I'm a PhD researcher in security and global affairs at Leiden University and here are my thoughts about the Brussels effect. So I understand the Brussels effect as this power to influence soft and hard norms worldwide to align with EU standards because of how attractive the European single market and the European way of life are. This power of influence, it's not a secret, has faded over the years and there are many reasons for that. Some of the two key reasons that I can think of and that are major challenges is the fact that first, the European single market is less attractive than it used to be as a consumer's market and also as a place for research, development and innovation. Uh, we can think of China, India, Indonesia, the United States as places where consumers' markets are growing and growing fast and there's also less barriers to innovation. It's just more easy to start um, a new business and launch a startup there. Another key reason is that the EU has lost a lot of credibility as a global geo geopolitical power. Um, its normative power that it used to have is not anymore a reality. And that has to do with double standards that it has its imperial, imperial past and the failure to meet expectations of the EU as this moral authority and also as a place uh, where um, research, innovation and development can prosper. Uh, there's been a lot of effort but it has clearly not been enough and the European Commission research services agree with that. Now I have to say that very often the European Commission and the EU institutions in general are blamed for these inefficiencies and failures to meet expectations but very often it's at the member states level that things are blocking the eu's proposals and the european parliament the european commissions and the european parliament's proposals are very often very uh, ambitious very bold and it's the member states that sort of like scale them down so i think that this is a very common thing in the EU to blame the EU institutions and the Commission for wrongdoings and to not take accountability at the member states level and I think this is a huge problem. So the EU really has to find new ways of exercising its geopolitical power on the global stage. The days of its normative power are clearly over so there's a lot of work to be done. One way of doing this is to create what I suggest to be a value-based innovation ecosystem that has five key components. The first one is a culture of collaboration with entrepreneurs and venture capitalists. This is essential to create regulations that work for them. So this is also in line with the better regulation agenda. We should put in place public consultations that are fun and effective and that work for those people whose opinions matter so much. The second key component is accountability. And here is where the EU's colonial past comes in. Um, I think that it's important to put marginalized groups, poorer regions of Europe and developing partners at the forefront of this innovation ecosystem. This is how the EU retains its credibility and civil society here will play a key role. The third key element is diversity. Now, it's not a secret that uh, diversity brings uh, better output of better quality and usually more efficient. So this is where the EU's diversity comes in. We should, this should be like a whole of Europe effort where everybody comes in and takes this seriously and is taken seriously. The fourth point is effective transparency. Now, I know the European Commission has put a lot of effort to become more transparent and to communicate better about what it's doing within its own borders and also outside. But there's still so much work to be done in communication. Um, I can think of the timeline leading to the, the adoption of the AI Act and everything that the media could talk about was these rules and regulations and how does that create an incentive for um, innovators and entrepreneurs to come and create an artificial intelligence company in Europe? I don't think it does create an incentive and it's a shame because at the same time there were very exciting uh, opportunities being created for example the strategic technologies for Europe platform step um, which I think was a great effort in the right direction but so much little was so little was said about it how can we know about those initiatives the EU has really 
a lot of work to communicate better about the amazing things that it's doing. And last but not least, that you have to substantially boost investment in innovation. There is no way around it. Um, if the EU, it's, if the European Commission is serious about the protection of its values, it must be ready to pay for their price. Um, you know, even the European Commission Research Services, the, the Giant Research Centre agrees with this. There's been lots of efforts, but it's still not enough. And there are many strategies to make the European single market more um, attractive for innovators, innovators and entrepreneurs to come and help us grow and help us become, once again, a leading geopolitical power on the global scale.